Things get wild on set, so we're going to send it over with Lou and Jason hanging out with Ron DeArmond and his crew from the Academy of Wildlife Education. Ron, you made my day, bringing <laughs> over a whole bunch. What do they call a bunch of snakes? Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Really? <laughs> so, Is it a gaggle yeah. of snakes? Sounds or, like good uh, to me. Gaggle. Okay. Uh, a squirm. Uh, a squirm? Yeah. I like that. Jason just dubbed a what squirm. we call a bunch of snakes. A squirm uh, of yeah. snakes. We have a squirm of snakes here uh, on sorry. Great Day today. And let's uh, go around the horn and find out what we have. First of all, on, on the, sc on the screen right, yeah. on Sam. Sam, she's got uh, the garter snake. Okay, that's uh, your, your regular uh, average guard, That's garter That's the one snake. that most people recognize. Is it garter or garden? Garter. Garter. Yeah, okay. so they look like a woman's garter. So <laughs> any of you guys want to put one on? No woman. I, <laughs> I didn't. Is that where I got the name from? Yeah, garter. Oh, I didn't again, know you that. Look at the stripes and stuff like that. And again, that's I, like a part garter. of the herpetological society never taught me that. How about this? And we learned something already. We're just getting started here. How cool is that? Uh, uh, imagine that. It's an educational segment. Uh huh. And uh, what do you have with you? Uh, I've got a, a very young black rat snake, and still has its uh, baby pattern and stuff. So oh, okay. Blend in because when it's an adult, it's going to be huge and jet black. These are one of Iowa's largest. Snakes okay. And, and this guy here, uh, this is a really cool one here. Yeah. I want to switch hands so you can see his his head because this is a hog nose snake and you right. can see it straight on you can't see it but if you turn him sideways a little bit yeah. you can see how his nose turns up kind of like Jackie's does when she <laughs> sees Jason and I walk into a room yeah there you, you know, go very very similar to that when you ask for a airbrush it, anything yeah, yeah <laughs> okay. but uh, so this is a hog nose that's correct? the hog nose snake and again yeah he's got his nose turned up because he can actually dig for his prey and he's going to go after the toads and stuff so uh, he's a big amphibian eater. Okay, the, and then what does there. Jason have? Yeah, Jason's got, in on this too. Yeah, he's got one of our more unusual snakes. He's got the prairie king snake, which is native to Iowa, but he's got one that's the albino morph, which is extremely rare. And uh, again, because it's that color in the wild, probably wouldn't live very long. But, uh, oh, really? So how did you acquire happen. said snake? Well, again, all of our stuff comes out of the genetic bank, and so we just call around and see who's got uh, okay. different uh, animals and stuff. And they had this one, and we thought that would be kind of cool. We don't have anything that's albino, and uh, snakes are very easy to work with. Okay, it's so the more unusual snake with Jason, that's perfect. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. easier to get an albino oh, sorry, snake buddy. than it is an albino black bear. I, so. just, I just tapped him, and he didn't like that. Yeah, so. he's uh, checking that air. That's what that forked tongue is flicking in the air for, is they're all testing and smelling, and that's how they smell. Now, it. animals like this in Iowa, they're nowhere to be seen. Not right now. I mean, it's the middle of winter. Are, they are all hibernating. They are true hibernators and stuff. Uh, these guys are crevice hibernators. They're going to go down into the caves and mines and crevices. Or your basement. He's your basement. To, right. He's trying to do that on me right now. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, they'll get to where it's a consistent temperature. It's kind of like the bats in the caves and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, this winter being really hard as far as temperature goes, uh, as long as there's a space that they can move further down, they'll be okay. The animals that are going to get it really rough is going to be the fish. Uh, if you get a thicker ice uh, crust on your ponds and stuff and um, there's no oxygen. I was going to yeah, explain you why that is. Yeah, you're going to lose uh, some of your, your oxygen and the fish are going to have a little bit of a difficulty and then some of the amphibians, if they didn't go down deep enough, uh, we're finding that that uh, frost line is really deep this year. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked at the Weather Service office in Johnston, it was down to 30 inches, which yeah. is very, very deep. Very, very deep and I was up in Wisconsin and they were asking folks to take the temperature of their tap water and if it was in the 30 someplace, then they were kind of concerned about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a, been a very cold winter and that all affects the wildlife and stuff uh, again nature goes in cycles and if you have a die-off that's okay nature can rebound mm -hmm. but it's when we get involved that uh, things have a little bit more difficulties and stuff mm -hmm. so it, it'll be a unique springtime to see what happens as far as uh, our amphibians and our fishes and maybe some of our reptiles and okay. how this winter affects uh, their numbers and stuff but all these animals are uh, considered predators uh, you, you want to have them around. Uh, unfortunately, snakes are, are one species that most people are afraid of, and mm -hmm. there's no reason you to be afraid of You can see how frightening these, these creatures are, yeah. okay, and how yeah. dangerous they are. Yeah, you definitely want them around. They're going to eat your rodents. Uh, again, rodents populate like crazy, and so you need to have a lot of diverse animals that will eat rodents, and the snakes are one of them. Uh, two of these animals are the constrictors, which would be the hognose and the black rat, or the king snake, 
Okay. Uh, the king snake is actually something that you want around. They actually can eat uh, poisonous snakes. And, wow. Uh, yeah, so those of you folks down in Madison County, you definitely want to have a good population of prairie king snakes because they'll eat the rattlesnakes and stuff. Uh, the easiest thing for a snake to eat is another snake. Mm -hmm. and that way they don't have to disengage their jaws and stuff mm -hmm. to eat their prey. And that's how, one of the cool how, things. How big will this guy get? He'll probably get uh, four or five feet. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I mean, he'll be a really good-sized snake. Uh, we uh, get him at this size, they imprint to us, and uh, they're eating pinkies right now, pinky mice. And, uh, but they won't go after your pinky, though. <laughs> they won't go after your okay. pinky finger. Uh, we hope not, we'll anyway, hope not, yeah. and we'll find out shortly. Okay. Now, you said this, this snake is, has an immunity to venom. Right, and again, that's just how nature uh, is designed. You know, your predator or prey, but that's how nature keeps other species in check. Um, yeah, if you didn't have the prairie king snake or the king snake group, then you would have an abundance of uh, venomous snakes out there that didn't have a, another predator. Uh, the only other animal in Iowa that uh, readily goes after rattlesnakes are red-tailed hawks. Okay. And red-tailed hawks really like rattlesnakes, and when they kill it and eat it, they leave the rattles in their nest. And so you think about the taxidermy hunters have on their walls. Right. Red-tailed hawks have got rattlesnake rattles in their nest. That's their trophy. So that's their that's trophy funny. room. Well, I didn't know that. And I didn't either. So, yeah, if you, you go up into a nest and you see rattles, uh, you know red-tailed hawks been living in there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, All right, yes. so the uh, Bald Eagle Days went well. Bald Eagle Days went well. It was a great opportunity to meet with the public. We we had uh, government entities out there, so the people got to interact, see their government uh, in action, mm -hmm. get to talk with them about the uh, wild places in central Iowa, uh, volunteer opportunities, because we're all about getting the community involved in wildlife conservation, and uh, where they can go to enjoy wildlife. Okay, and now so the next world. big day would be what? Next big day is going to be Earth Day. Uh, it's the end of April, and we're going to talk about, you know, recycling and reducing and reusing and all that fun stuff. Uh, it'll feature businesses that uh, have environmentally safe products and stuff. And then we'll probably uh, focus real heavy on uh, bats and stuff as far as people building bat houses. Okay, and good. Taking them home, and uh, I've got to make a few phone calls to a few uh, lumber supply companies to see if they want to help us out with the event. Oh, I think we can get that done. I I think we can get okay. that done too and uh, again give away free bad houses at that event. It'd be nice Perfect. to get a few hundred of those built. Excellent. And, uh, we'll get, get the Great up. Day logo and slap it on the front. Yeah, that'll, that'll draw them in. That, huh? that'll, dri okay. that'll drive bats right to it. Well, Perfect. Yes. Absolutely. Lou, so look at me. Sleep. I'm Alice Cooper. There you go, Alice <laughs> Cooper. We're going to see you in Hairball at the State Fair. <laughs> All right. So tell go. everybody where you guys are located. Uh, Academy of Wildlife Education is during open during regular mall hours. Uh, so we're open seven days a week. Uh, come out, enjoy the Wildlife Ambassadors and learn something about the wildlife that lives in your backyard. All right, awesome. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, sure. Sam. We'll be right back. It's a very wild edition of Great.